Today on the Slanted Lens, we are back out at the SKB factory shooting an industrial portrait. It's one of those assignments that can go really easy or hard, so let's get started and see what we can do. When I say industrial portrait, it's not a lifestyle portrait, it's not a documentary style portrait, it's an industrial portrait, which is more commercial than it is portrait. It's about making the factory and the people look good. It's more the kind of portrait that you would see in an annual report or on a company's website, something they would use to represent the company. With that in mind, I want the people and the place to look very inviting. So let's take a look at some tips on how to make that happen. Number one, one of the things that you can do is to use color to make the drab, ordinary environment that you're shooting in, like the machinery and everything, look more interesting. I'm gonna do just that with this image. I'm going to add a blue gel in the background to add interest. I'm then going to add smoke to catch the color and to get rid of the ceiling and the parts of the factory that I don't really want to see that aren't really that pretty. Number two, I'm going to dress the workers in company shirts to bring order and uniformity to the guys in the image. This makes the company look like they pay more attention to detail and are more organized and methodical in the workplace. Number three, I want some dramatic element that gives visual interest. I'm going to stand a person up front with a great big wrench. I'm going to have him turn into the light so he catches an angle of incident and it's give us a nice glow off in that wrench. It kind of gives us a little bit of a, an item that stands out. Number four, I want them holding tools and equipment that they work with so that it connects them to the job. It makes it feel like they're all part of this process. Number five, these guys are working around big machinery, so don't forget to make sure that they're wearing the proper safety equipment, the right shoes, a hard hat, the safety glasses, the earplugs, gloves in some cases. Just make sure you talk to the people there, make sure that they really represent the company correctly, that they're wearing the proper safety equipment. Nothing kills a shot faster than not having on the hard hat or something that makes it unusable to the company. So let's move on to doing our shot now. Time's gonna be of the essence. This machine makes money for the company and every minute that it's not working are cases that it's not making for SKB. So we're not gonna have all day to take this image. We're gonna to have to be ready in short order. So here's some tips on how you can be ready to swoop in the second you turn the machine off so you won't hold things up and get your shot as quickly as possible. Number one, I'm going to set my strobes up on stands. I'm gonna test them, make sure that they're all firing. Make sure that all the radio slaves are working that all the strobe heads are working. Number two, I'm gonna find all the power outlets that I can, and I'm gonna run cable and cords to the correct places as close as I can get them while the machine's still working so that I can quickly pull power. Always have an extra outlet, extra power, because you're gonna need it. Number three, I'm gonna get the shirts pressed, I'm gonna get them ready to put them on the employees so that they're ready the second they're done. Number four, I'm gonna pick my angle, I'm gonna pick my lens, I'm gonna see exactly what I want so that I know that when it's time, I can quickly get my shot. Number five, Warm up the smoke machine. Don't wait until they shut the machine down to plug your smoke machine in. Even if you plug it in on the side and letting it warm up, then you just unplug it, run to where it's going to work, plug it back in, and it's ready to go. But if you have to start those things from scratch, they take a little while to warm up. Number six, get help from a client or other workers that are in the area. They can help you carry a stands in. They can help you to pull cords. You can kind of get it organized ahead of time, saying, I need you to pull this and bring it here. I need you to haul the stand in here. Get things set up very quickly. Number seven, have an extra strobe head that you don't think you're gonna need. Have it up and plugged in and ready to go because then when you're shooting, you're going, oh, I just need a little bit of light in that guy's face. You can quickly get that light into place and help it to solve your problem. Always have an extra strobe head. So there's some tips on being ready so you can swoop in and get, get started. I'm sure there's a lot of other things you can think of. Put them in the comments, we'd love to hear from you. You know, when the time comes to turn off the machine and start to set up, my mind just starts to race. You know, first I want to move the heavy parts of the machine into place, like I want to get this big crane and this mold into place. I want to get a pallet jack in there for somebody to sit on. I've kind of thought about all these things ahead of time, but now it's time to get them all into place. Everything happening so I can get started. Okay, now for our first light, we're using a Baja B4 with an octodome. We've got a grid on it. This is going to light our man's face up front. And by turning that wrench just right, we're going to catch an instant angle. It's going to make that nice reflection, give us a bright glow on that wrench. Not very hard to do, but you gotta get it in the right place. It's a nice punctuation for our shot. Our second light was a grid on the camera right side on the two workers' faces. It's a 20 degree grid on their faces. I'm gonna pan it right and left. It's not too hot on one or the other. I'll also kind of tilt it up off the floor so it's lighting their faces and not so much their clothing. The reason I'm using grids on all these lights is because I wanna create a moody lighting situation. I wanna draw attention to their faces and really make them stand out in the shot. Our next light is a grid on the man's face on the camera left side. It's a 20 degree grid. 
It's set up just to light his face and nothing else. Now our four faces have about the same exposure. It's a great starting point. I'm going to add a rim on the camera right side. This is a new box I've started to use from Dynalite. It's an open face GRB35. It's made by Dynalite. It's a 16 sided soft box. It has a diffuser you can put on the front. I've got that on in this shot. Kind of softens the light out, gives you a gorgeous light. It has that silver lining in the box. It gives us nice punch. And just a nice, soft, overall, even light. It's a great rim light in this situation. It'll give me a little bit of light in the atmosphere when the smoke kind of rolls forward as well. We now add a head in the background, aim straight through the machine. I'm gonna put a full blue on that head so we get a nice blue in the background. It's gonna shoot through that smoke. We now added a head with a full blue again on the camera left side in the background, aim through that machine on the camera left side. Our last light was a head aimed at the smoke in the background, in the middle. It's meant to pick up all the smoke in the atmosphere we'll see in the background. We got a full blue on that as well, so full blue on all three of our background lights. When we add our smoke to this, it's gonna give us a nice look in the background. Our camera settings for this shot are 160 ISO and a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second and an aperture of 7.1. I want a little more depth of field. So there's our camera settings. Here are some of the unretouched images. I had a great time shooting this industrial image. The guys out at SKB were great guys to work with. It was a great place to shoot and we got a nice image. I hope this gives you some good tips on how to shoot in industrial images, some things you can do to make them a little more interesting, and also some things you can do to be ready so you can quickly get in there, get your shot, and get out, and not keep the machinery stopped too long. So keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. For 25 years, I have estimated in the photo industry. It, in the beginning, was a very daunting and overwhelming task. In times, I put together a formula to help me to be able to get the jobs, to estimate the jobs, and make that process not so painful. I'm going to share that formula with you. If you go to thuslandlens.com slash estimating, we're selling a digital download there that's going to teach you all the things that I have learned after 25 years in the industry. Pricing for both video, for still photography, for weddings, for portraits. Go to thuslandlens.com slash estimating. You'll get all the information there in that digital download. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and go to the website.